Hey everyone, I've been playing a lot of Zelda recently, and in it they have some pretty cool dragon statues that consist of a head, a bunch of body points, and a tail. And I thought, hey, you know, I could easily do that in PCG Graph. And so I did. And then I uh, did it to excess. <laughs> uh, so... What this is doing is I have drawn a spline. At the lowest index of the spline, zero, I put the head, and at the highest index, I put the tail. And to do that, I created a custom PCG blueprint, and I will now show you how to do it. To start off with, I'm going to create a blueprint. Everything will live inside there. I'm going to make an actor type, and I'll call it BP underscore dragon tutorial. Open it up. and add a spline component, and add a PCG component. And now I have to create the PCG that the PCG component will be loading, PCG underscore dragon tutorial. Now that that's created, I'll go back into the blueprint and set the PCG to this. I've got it selected, so I can just click the arrow. And there we go. Now I am done with the blueprint, and I can drag it into the world. And let's go and make the splines a little bigger to start off with. All right. And now I will edit the PCG graph. First, I'm going to spawn a get spline data node. And the actor filter is self, because the spline and the PCG graph are being called from the same blueprint. I'll do a spline sampler. And this, I could use subdivision on spline if I wanted finer control over the direction that each of these statue pieces faces, but I'm just going to use distance for convenience sake. The distance is going to be 650, because my static meshes are 600 in length. So that gives them a 50 buffer between each one. And now I'll set up a projection node. And for this, I'm going to use landscape, just landscape, so that these statue pieces rotate with the landscape. And now here's where I set up my filter. So I'm going to do an index, get attribute from point index, and I will make a point filter. So what I'm going to do is select index 0 and get the attribute position and output it to position filter. And then if, when I filter, if the position is equal to the position of the index 0, which is the very first spline point, then I will keep it, and that will be the head. And now I'm getting an error. Let's filter on position. So if position equals position filter. And I'm getting a warning here. Um, it's not compatible. It's not spatial data. And an error here. Input is not a point data. So what I can do is add a two-point node on the spatial data. And I'll just hook this up right here. And hook this up right here. And this converts the data to, to point data. And it makes these happy. So now this point filter should be working, so I'll do a static mesh spawner and another static mesh spawner. The first one's going to be the head, so I'll add the mesh entry, head, and for the second one, it's going to be the body, so I'll add that mesh entry, body, and let's see the results. Okay, so that's kind of the head and the body, but they're rotated wrong, and it looks like they need to turn to the left, so that's going to be negative 90 degrees. So I'm actually going to just get rid of this two-point filter, because if I send a node through transform points, transform points will work with this out data, and then it, as you see, converts it to point data on the output. So I can just use that instead. And get rid of this two-point filter. Square that up, and there we go. So now we just need the tail. 
I'll do the same thing, attribute from point index. And this, let me just inspect and see how many points there are. There are 17 points, so I'm going to get point 17 instead of point 0. And now I'll do the same sort of point filter. And I'll plug this outside filter, which is all the points except for the head, into this point filter, and send the attribute over here. And now, um, just for organizational sake, I want it to be head, body, tail. So since I know what the tail index is, I'll say doesn't equal the position filter, so it doesn't equal the tail. And now anything that's not the tail is going to go to the middle, and anything that is the tail is going to go to the bottom. So now I just select the tail, and there we go. There's the dragon. But if you're paying attention, you know there's a problem. The tail itself is set to a single point. It's not set to the final point in this thing. So as I move it along, it uh, stays right here in the dragon. And this is where I got stumped, because you can input the index, or you could even filter on the index. But the problem is, you can't use $index as a source. And so I don't know how to directly access the index. So I had to solve this via a PCG blueprint element. So uh, let me go and create that blueprint now. It's going to be a type PCG blueprint element. I'm going to call this PCG underscore index to steepness. I'm going to basically take this index and copy it into the steepness attribute. And I'm using steepness because I'm not using steepness for anything else. And using density interferes with debugging. I'm not using density either, but it interferes with debugging. And I could use it for other purposes, such as randomizing which static mesh I choose. So steepness, instead, uh, works pretty well for me. So for this node, I'm going to first start off with a node title override. I will call it index to steepness. And under the class defaults, the details, I'm going to expose it to library. This will allow me to select it from the left nav in the library. Category, I'll just say uh, custom. That's where all of my custom blueprints that I have built are going to live. And description will be copy index to steepness attribute. Now, the only function that I'm going to override is the execute with context function. I don't need to use a point loop because I'm actually going to essentially build the point loop in the execute with context. I'm going to convert the in context to a local variable because I use that a lot throughout this thing. Local variable I will call context. And now I'm going to break the input, which is a PCG data collection, and that gives me an array of tagged data. Now on the tagged data, I'm going to do for each loop. And each for each loop, I'm going to break the PCG tagged data. and cast it to PCG spatial data. And this basically ensures that the data I'm working with is PCG spatial data. If it's not, it will fail the loop and go on to the next step. As PCG spatial data, two points data with context, and that's where I'm going to use this context for the first time. If you're new to Unreal, you can hold Control when you drag out an attribute to get the attribute itself, or hold Alt to get a set option for it. Now I'm going to convert the PCG point data to a local variable. I'll call it PCG point data. Now I'm going to create an array, PCG point array, and I'm going to make it PCG point structure. 
and I will convert it to an array. And now I'll hold that Alt key, and I'm going to set it. And what I'm going to do here is grab the PCG point data, call a get points node, and that I'm going to drag into the PCG point array. So this is sort of simulating what a point loop does. It gets all the points from the PCG points data, which you would send into the point loop, and converts it to an array. And now I can loop through this array myself instead of relying on the point loop. So I'll do a for each loop, hook that up, and for this I'll set members in PCG point. And if you've worked with any point loops, you will know that you often use the set members in PCG point inside a point loop. Well, for this I'm going to set steepness, and I'm just going to set it directly to the array index. That will convert the array index into a float, which steepness holds, and steepness will then be the array index, which is 0 through 11, 17, something. I don't know what it is now. And now, PCG point array, I'm going to set array element, hook these up, and I'm going to reuse this index right here. So I set the member PCG point, but then I also copy that PCG point to the PCG point array. And the item is going to be this struct out. I think I could just connect straight up to the array element, but no reason not to just reuse this existing pin. OK, now when it's completed, I need to finish everything up. So set points is the node that I'm going to use. And let me see, I can get it, I think, from PCG point data. Set points, there we go. And the endpoints are going to be this PCG point array. And the target is going to be the PCG point data. So the PCG point array is the same points as is in the PCG point data. I'm just copying all the data over to them. All right, next I'm going to work on the output. So I'll do a new local variable of PCG tagged data array. It should already be set to an array. You just need to select PCG tagged data. And this we're going to use to uh, connect to the output. So initially on this for each loop, we're breaking the PCG tagged data. And every time we go through it, we're working on the points. So when we go back and are uh, creating the output, we need to remake this PCG tagged data array. So every time I go through it, I want to add the results of this for each loop into this PCG tagged data array. So to do that, I'm going to use a array add. And I'm going to add the PCG points data, which I then make into PCG tagged data. Hook that up and connect that. And now every time we complete this for each loop, we're adding to this array. And now the last thing we need to do is on this for each loop, when we're finally completed, we output that array into the return node. So PCG tagged data array. I'll make it into a PCG tag, well, PCG data collection, and hook it up to the output. And now I'll return this. So now what I'm doing is looping through all the points and converting array index into steepness. So now if I compile and save and go back to my Dragon tutorial, I can look over on the left side custom. PCG index to steepness. I should have named this BPCG to indicate it was a blueprint for my own internal uh, usage, but that's fine. And now let me go ahead and I'll just break all of this and hook it up to index to steepness and inspect. And moment of truth, let's select the object. There we go. So steepness goes 0 through 29, and index goes 0 through 29.
And now what I can do is instead of get attribute from point index, I can do a attribute select. And input source will be steepness. And output source will be steepness filter. And for this, I'll select the max. I don't need to bother selecting the min because the minimum is always going to be index 0. I just need to find the max. So now, steepness is an attribute that I can filter on directly. So let me hook this up directly to the point filter. And I'll say target attribute steepness. I can use a constant threshold and set it to 0. So if steepness is 0, it's the head. If it's not, it goes into this point filter. This point filter, I can hook up the attribute select to the filter. And this threshold attribute, I'll say, let's see, what did I call it? Steepness filter. And target attribute will also be steepness doesn't equal the steepness filter, which means it doesn't equal the tail point. And that should be everything I need. And let's see. So not quite. I did something wrong. Let's see what I did wrong. I type out steepness. Let's fix that. And there we go. If the steepness is 0, it's a head. If it is the max steepness in this entire set of points, it's the tail. And that's everything you need to create a little dragon. All right. Enjoy.